Hi, I'm professional wildlife photographer Paul Miguel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you lots of tips and techniques for photographing small birds. So the best way, of course, to attract small birds is to provide them with food. And I'm down here today at my feeding station, which I've set up for this winter. What I'm going to show you will also apply to perhaps your own garden and even public locations such as parks and nature reserves. Quite often when birds are coming to food, they'll often land in a nearby tree or bush, almost as like a, a lookout area before they come down to the food. This can be your opportunity to get some really natural shots as they perch in the branches before they come down. Try to use a range of different foods if you can because that's going to encourage more bird species. So here I've got a mixture of food, I've got some fat balls, I've got pure sunflower hearts, I've got mixed seed and I've also got some peanuts. Now in terms of photography I want to get the birds in quite a specific location. So you can see I've got the bird feeders in front of the hide here and I've also added a few perches and that's just going to encourage the birds to stay for a little bit longer and hopefully just get them in the routine of perching in that area. This is one of the things I like to do now, which is actually to provide the birds with something that's really, really solid. I find they just seem to look a bit more comfortable when they've got something nice and solid to land on, and they can also forage as well. So something like this log, which I found in the local woodland, it's also really good because it's got lots of kind of nooks and crannies in here, little crevices, and that's just something that small birds are naturally going to forage on anyway. So I want to get the birds feeling really comfortable perching around this area, which is why I've put this up as well, and it's just got loads of twigs on here giving them loads of choices on where to perch and I think it'll just feel really natural for them and hopefully they're going to feel safe as well. But the log and the branches that I'm leaving down here they I would call those my standing perches so they're not, not necessarily what I'm going to use for photography they're just going to be here for when I'm not down in the hide taking pictures just to keep the birds coming and hopefully keep the birds more comfortable. Then when it comes to photography I'll actually change those perches for something more photogenic. So actually getting the birds to go onto those perches, that's always the most difficult bit. Again, they do seem to be more comfortable on the sturdier, more solid perches. So if you can, I would try and start off with something more solid like a mossy log or a stump. Um, try and find something that looks natural. I'm going to show you one. Try and find something not only natural, but something that looks photogenic as well. So something like this is going to look fantastic in the images rather than the log I use as my stand-in. So I could actually swap it in exchange for this and again because of its nature lots of nooks and crannies in there it's already quite a natural place for a small bird to be foraging so a bit of food and the bird hopefully is going to go and land right on the top of there With small birds like the different species of tit for example, I think it's really important that you use a very small delicate perch. So something like this which is a piece of alder with catkins on, that's going to look much more natural and it's not going to dwarf the bird. So the idea is to put your perch close to the bird feeder. So I would suggest putting it either right next to it or perhaps slightly higher. And I'm using a green garden pole here just so I can slot the twig into there. For the bigger birds, maybe blackbirds or thrushes, perhaps jays for example, then think about something that's a bit bigger, so maybe a, a much bigger, wider branch or perhaps a stump or a mossy log. Some species may be a bit more specific, so for example if you're trying to attract a greater spotted woodpecker then a nice vertical branch or tree trunk or perhaps uh, again a vertical stump which you put into the ground would be absolutely ideal. Mm -hmm. 
This video is also part of a playlist, the bird photography tutorial playlist. So you'll find lots of videos in there to help you with your bird photography. And also I'm gonna put a link to a separate playlist which is all about how to create a feeding station as I have done here. So I'll put a link to that at the end of the video. One thing to mention is if you're hanging bird feeders up like this with these arms, then there is a chance that the birds are actually gonna perch on here, which you don't want because it's not very photogenic. So it depends how busy the feeding station is. The busier it is, the more competition you get, and the more chance of birds landing on the perch that you want them to. Uh, if you are having that problem where the bird is perching on here, then what I probably try is, is to take the arms away um, and if you can actually just attach a bird feeder directly onto the top of the pole. And um, basically the less places you give the birds to perch, the more chance they're gonna go on the one that you specifically provided for them. So if you can minimize the number of options for the bird to perch, then that's really gonna help you. If you're really struggling and the birds just don't seem to want to go on those thin perches, then bring it in even closer, attach it to the bird feeder so that the perch is directly above the food. Also think about the distance that you need to be from the birds for photography. So for me with a full frame Canon and a 500mm lens, I actually need to be somewhere between 12 and 15 feet for photographing small birds about the size of a great tip. If you're setting up a hide like I have, then a good way to measure the distance of how close you need the perches to be is actually just to count the number of steps. So I'll just go from the hide, walk out about 12 steps and that's going to be roughly around the right distance and then if I need to I can just tweak the perches a little bit closer or further away from there. Background and light is absolutely key when it comes to bird photography. I've chosen my location here very, very carefully. We searched it so I knew exactly where to put my hide and where I wanted the birds to be. This background here is where I'm shooting towards. So I'm getting a mixture of this woodland edge and a bit of the bramble and sometimes these grasses as well. Uh, but it's mostly this woodland edge where I'm shooting towards and with a big lens that's gonna go nice and softly out of focus. So you wanna try and get a background that's as far away as possible. Um, if you can't do that, then try and look for light tones such as grasses which almost look yellow in the winter time they can give really really good backgrounds light as well is very important so i know here the sun is going to come up over here behind the hide it's going to shine through onto the birds onto the background and that's going to give me good light throughout the winter months so if you even if you're working in a public location you might be able to position yourself to get better light and better background and if you're not too sure then preview it with a long lens use your focusing ring to bring it closer in and then see how the background goes out of focus. So is there any particular time of day that's good for bird photography? Well, I would absolutely say that early morning is definitely the best time and I do most of my bird photography first thing in the morning. Afternoons can be good as well, uh, particularly when birds are stocking up before they go to roost in the winter. But the morning I do find is a bit more active and also you've got the added bonus that you've got a chance of frost first thing in the morning. So if you've put out specific perches for the birds, then there's a good chance at some point over the winter you're going to get some nice frost on there as well. Do click on the playlist here which shows you how to set up a feeding station for small bird photography and that takes you through everything from researching and choosing the actual location to setting up the bird feeders and the hide and the photography as well. So also subscribe to my channel here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.